Hey, 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 what is going on? You are watching and of course listening to Tags Live, AKA Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition, where we are here every Wednesday night on our brand new home at Crowdcast. This is episode 470. I am your host, Stevie, and welcome back, Cotter. Welcome back, Cody Maurice Dorget. How the hell are you doing, ahead. Cody? <laughs> you got me wanting to sing the Welcome Back Cutter. Sing it. How did it go? <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> we are showing our age. I know, right? I was like, you know, I'm old if I know the Welcome Back Cutter theme song. Hello, darlings. It's so good to see you all. All my love. Hi, my love. Oh, I missed you so much. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Boy, did we miss you. Um, Bet you didn't miss my screeching. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did. We missed all of you and welcome back. Um, we want to hear all about your trip in Sin City. We do want to thank, though, our special guest host, Teddy Alexis, who yes. is so amazing to fill in mm -hmm. for either one of us. And the, the two of us had a, a brilliant time. And so you should know that your seat was filled well and with love, he, with yes. love. yeah that's so boom we thank love you teddy, teddy. So much. Yeah. thank you so much teddy um okay this is episode 470 we missed you so much though how was sin city sin city was sinful no it was very wholesome actually <laughs> really yeah we spent i spent a lot of time with the family i went for graduation so we did a lot of family time but the last night me and my mom and my boyfriend joe we all went to drag race live and yes. it was so good but there was a little something at the end that i thought was a little bit distracting one of the queens was not i feel well, like let's not, just break it down not their best about you're talking about Derek Barry. I am talking about Derek Barry. For yeah. those of you drag queen, he was missing steps. I was like, "What's going on?" Go ahead. What are you going to say? Well, you know, I saw the show a, a couple months ago, and I thought it was legendary. I just thought it was on point. Derek was in our show, and you know, mm -hmm. he does his whole Britney Spears number. I felt like flawless flawless. And I'm not sure if he did that number. Of course, I'm sure he did. He did, yes. Yeah. Um, I just thought, you know, snaps all around. I was so impressed with the show. And I was with somebody that really knows Drag Race and watches all of the franchises. I only watch mm -hmm. the main one when it comes about. I know you watch and Joe. I watch all of all them, of them. Too, yeah. yeah. Um, so I really want to know your opinion. I love the show. Asia O'Hara is the MVP. She is the, the host with the most. Yes. Okay, O'Hara, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're a genteel, your lady like you, O'Hara, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, her crowd work is amazing. She's so quick and witty and just all around just amazing. Uh, the performances were amazing. Jada Essence Hall was amazing. Yeah. My mom in love with Georges. My mom couldn't oh. stop talking about Georges. Georges is the best dancer. Georges is so adorable. Georges is amazing. I, I heard about Georges on all the rest of the trip. It was just so great. But my favorite was Lawrence Cheney. She's oh. the winner of the UK version of Drag Race. I remember. She did a This Is Me. You remember that song from The Greatest Showman? Child, uh, yes. Yes. She did a performance from that. It was epic i cried i had my life but derrick barry in the last 30 seconds of the show when they were doing their all together choreography she was missing right. steps she looked a little bit maybe she was exhausted i don't know i feel like if i have a bad day people need to give me a little grace but it just really kind of took me out of the moment i was like what is going on with miss derrick she was so good just 10 minutes ago so i don't know well you know we they do the show like nonstop. Yeah. They don't take a break, although they mix, intermingle them throughout the week. And I think that maybe Derek had an off night. Not when I saw her, but you never know. Yeah. And I I was just so beside myself. You guys, if you go to Vegas, you got to see the show. It's go totally see the show. worth it. It's that good. I loved it so much. And we. I'm so glad you're back. But Did you see what Teddy said? 
What did Teddy say? He said, "Step to him, poppers backstage." <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Stop messing with the other principal actors or the guys. dancers. But them dancers were hot, child. Oh my god, uh, it's oh like the god. pit crew times ten that are working on this show, and you know, there's stories to be told on every on every performance. So. Yeah, I love yeah, that kind I was of work. Run into though. them in the club, so you know it's funny. It ruins because in LA I did a couple plays, and when you're in that mode of performance where you have to do so many shows per week, and you're working with the mm -hmm. cast, and you've rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed, and then it's showtime, and you have so many shows to do per week, you really mm -hmm. bond. It's family time, and yeah. you do develop these relationships sometimes romantic i was in gay plays in la and so yeah and you got to get it together every night and do it again and it's exciting it's really exciting but they're on this it level is. of perform that like amazing so anyways check it out yes please did we, you miss me while i was away we yeah. really did miss oh, you thank you yeah. We did, but we loved Teddy. I don't know if Teddy heard yes. us, but we did a tribute to Teddy a minute ago on how well he is. Like, he's just the best co-host ever. Yeah. I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I was just joking. We I are in the Teddy. middle, actually the beginning of a Pride promo giveaway where we want all of you to participate in. All month long, you can get 25% off adamstoybox.com. Just go to adamstoybox.com and use our promo code TAGS25. You'll get 25% off the entirety of the site. We're talking lube, cock rings, clothing, masturbators, so on and so forth. Take advantage of it. It is nice. the deal. But you can also take our survey. And if you take our survey, you'll be entered in to win one of two prizes. And we're talking about an Adam's Toy Box toy, as well as Tags swag. And we will be drawing the winner at the end of Pride here in New York, June 25th. Ooh. So all you got to do is take our survey. It's on tagspodcast.com. It's all over the place there. And I'll try and put it in, in the in the show here for you guys if you haven't already cool. taken it. Take it. And we really appreciate all the input. Okay. Well, we just finished Memorial Day weekend. And we're talking about Memorial Day shenanigans because... I had such a good weekend. I know oh, you really? did. Well, I really did. So much fun. It's always the kickoff of summer, as I like to call it. Everybody calls it that. Labor Day being the end of it. Boo-hoo. But we are at the beginning of it. So let's yeah. really get excited about this particular summer. And I had so much fun on all weekend. I talked about it on the, the last episode. But what I did, I went to the Eagle on Sunday night, and I ultimately met this boy that we went home together. He left at noon the next day. But the thing is, Cody, we I was the top in this. And everyone who listens to this episode, primarily it, Autumn, I got my top on with him, and he was moaning like there was no tomorrow. We had sex so many times. He topped me at one point, which was okay. amazing. All right. Come on, Flip Flop. But I love it. <laughs> really, I was the top of the situation. We've decided we want to do this again. And the thing about it was, I am a good top. And I'm yeah, learning that girl. about myself. Oh, my God. I, I feel like I just birthed a baby. Oh, my you gosh. Did. You did. You rubbed <laughs> off on me. And that's what was so cool. And the thing about it was, he was moaning so loudly that I was getting a little worried, like, oh, my God, my neighbors are like, I'm like, keep it down. Mm. But it, I loved his moaning and him taking. It's good, right? Yeah, it was good. So I learned something I about that. myself this weekend that I really can be versatile. He's 20 years younger than me. He's 32. And we had the greatest time. And we were texting today. So we'll see for some more fun. What yes. should you get into, though? First, I want to say blouses unite. Because we are blouses here. And we're out and proud, girl. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I had a great time. I went to go see the Little Mermaid movie. More on that later. Yes. We and then we went to, to go uh we went to Horse Meat Disco and that was so much fun. 
We twirled, we danced, we lived. The music was amazing this time. I know we said that it wasn't the best. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be the last time we went. But this time it was amazing. We got to see so many people that we hadn't seen. And then me and Joe came home intoxicated and we got our groove all. It must have been something in the water that yes. weekend because... I ate his ass for about 45 minutes. It was like, it was like groceries in there, honey. It was just delicious. I could not, I lived. So yeah, it was I a good time. I love that. To come off of a party like that and with your boyfriend, my neighbor was just talking about that and he really wants to go with a partner to some of these parties. You just did that experience. And obviously you see a lot of things going on at these parties, but to come back home and be with your boo and then tear him a new one. Oh yeah. And I, <laughs> a new one was torn by my by my tongue, by my fingers, by my dick, by all the things. So yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. No. Ten out of ten. Would do again. Ten out of ten. Yes. <laughs> the ten out of ten. That's so funny. I love it. We are live in front of a virtual audience and keep those comments coming. As Teddy says, flosses to the front. Please. Bryce says, <laughs> yes. Brandon says, yes, yes, yes. Bryce says, motor boat the booty. Yeah, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. So you got to get that action in there. Just like, oh. <laughs> so interesting thing about my boy is his whole, just not to be T TMI, but I'm just yeah. going to be TMI, was kind of like pushed out naturally. Oh. And he's not always a bottom. Have you ever experienced that before? I was so like, <gasps> shocked and didn't know what to do but it was out there just naturally oh i mean i imagined it like an audi with a, a belly button or how certain nipples are different types some of them are a little mo more pierced and others are not and mm -hmm. so i i mean it was out there and ready to be had and ready to go i yeah, love that i, I haven't gotta, experienced that yet but i got well, I got Joe now, so. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but you top the top? That is that is next level. That's yeah, he said he's normally advanced. the top. Yeah, That's, and so uh, he was moaning, right there. moaning away. <laughs> and did I say he was moaning? Yeah, he was moaning. <laughs> Get it, girl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We have so much to get into in these hot topics. And, you know, it's May 31st, but tomorrow is June 1st, and we're talking Pride season kick off. That's right. Tomorrow kicks off Pride season. And the question is, are we ready? Well, you know, there's a couple stories that we wanted to run by you, and then we want to get your opinion on there is a florida business and we're talking about florida that displayed a homophobic slur on a sign over the past weekend memorial day weekend and it was a business in tallahassee florida that put up a homophobic sign let me read you what it said it said veterans get a day fags and child molesters get a month why that alone set off a whole host of uh, Florida representatives, representatives yeah. from the, the state, thank goodness, mm -hmm. calling it out like Jackson Peel, calling it out, saying this is ridiculous, this is bigotry. Um, others had the same opinion of it. The Democratic Caucus of Florida went to see the sign in person before sharing, sharing their disgust on Twitter. This kind of bigotry, they wrote, should have no place in our Tallahassee community. It is an embarrassment. And the people at Rick's Repair Shop, and the one that put the sign up, yeah. should be ashamed of their foolish, hurtful, and wrongful words, they wrote in a tweet. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of what we're approaching as Pride comes about. Cody, there was a couple other stories that caught my attention too. There was in LA of all places in North Hollywood, there was a school that had a flag for the season coming up and they, it was burned down and they burned down the whole thing. There was a play mm. by a high school community in Indiana that said, absolutely, you can't do this play because it has LGBTQ content in it. They raised the money and did it on their own. I think the question is, as we approach pride what's the temperature that we're feeling because i will tell you before you answer that in san mm -hmm. francisco my hometown san francisco 
Pride announced that they're, they have some security plans in place. The organization that puts on Pride announced it's taking measures to keep events safe. It comes as Pride committees and LGBTQ organizations are taking greater security and precautions amid and intensifying national backlash to the LGBTQ rights with Pride Month in kicking off. In San Francisco, several LGBTQ nonprofits have banded together to seek $350,000 in the city's new fiscal year budget to pay for security. That's how much it wow. costs. Wow. So, we're talking dollars that they're putting towards it. Maybe, you know, Cody, when you hear like Chase Bank and all these businesses that always like align themselves with pride every year, mm -hmm. it would be nice if they paid for some of the security this particular year. Are you worried? Don't ask if, Target. Oh, go ahead. Finish what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your read on the temperature this year on the prides around, you know, as we're entering pride season? I mean, do you think people are going to be a little bit more have anxiety? And what's your read on all this? Well, my read is that it feels like the bigots are getting emboldened by the the pervasive hate that's going on in this country right now and we need to not let that stop us from celebrating pride because pride is a celebration it is a way for us to help quell the sh the shame that we kind of grew up with and this man saying that we don't celebrate veterans as as much as we celebrate our queer people that's a that's a bunch of malarkey because we celebrate veterans all year round I cannot look at someone who has served this country and not say thank you for your service any time, any day of the year. So I think that that's ridiculous that he would even say that. And they honestly, I feel like we need this month because it's a reminder to us that we should not feel shame. We should actually be a prod prideful of who we are and what we stand for in this world. So I I think that we should be celebrating as much as possible this year so we can tell the bigots that we're here, we're queer, get used to it. Right. And before we get a lot of people chiming in on the conversation, and I want to agree 100% with you, unlike Target, that took many of their products, if you remember, we talked about that story, they came up with several products for the current pride season, I think it was 2000 mm -hmm. products. And due to backlash, they took away a lot of that mainly yeah. towards the trans community. And what I think is now is not the time you should never take a step back. If we look at our forefathers and Stonewall, they did the opposite. They pushed yeah. back. It's not a time to be timid and shy. It's a time to say, no, we are here. We are queer and we are not That's going right. anywhere. And we're not. on the other hand, I do appreciate San Francisco and other pride festival organizers taking steps to make sure that there's extra security. And I do hope mm -hmm. that some of these people, organizations like Chase or maybe even Target, this would be a great way to show their support. And if it really does cost all this money for security, and we know it does to pay these people to be security, then put your, you know, pay for this security and really show your support. That's how you can support this year's Pride Parade in all sorts of communities happening around the world is you can invest in security to make sure that there is no backlash happening when we're trying to celebrate our unique identity. Yes, I hear that. I agree with you 100%. We got some comments coming in. What are people saying? Bryce says that he lives in Trumpland, Texas, and oh. and he won't be he won't be participating in any pride events, unfortunately. Brandon says, as a Florida resident, not native, it's scary out here. I'm a little feel, fearful this Pride Month. Doug says it's also correct. May is Military Appreciation Month, and November is Military Family Appreciation Month. So, so both there. of those, they get a whole. We get two whole months for militaries and their families. And Adrian says, if America learned to mind its own business, we would not have the problems we have. And Bryce comes back to say, I am prideful of, for who I am. I just don't want those hateful mofos to uh, 
a gun emoji him. A trans woman was just murdered in in his, their town. So oh, that's really sad. Um, Adrian also chimed in and said, Buffalo Pride this weekend is beefing up their security as well. Yeah, it's yeah. just an interesting year as we approach. And now it's not the time to, I think, retract. But you want to be safe. And it would be nice to know, like San Francisco, that they're taking extra measures to keep you safe. You know, that's all you can do, right? So Yes, I hear that 100%. And I did just put it into the poll section. Uh, we have a poll available now. Please take our poll. Uh, in this climate, does celebrating pride worry you? The two options are no, pride is a celebration. And yes, it is worrying. And right now, a lot of people are saying that it's worrying. So I hear that. Got it. We hear you. And, you know, we were talking recently about Target. And we told you that whole story about how Target came out with a slew of products and retracted mm -hmm. many of them, put them in the back of the store because it got such backlash. And people were going into the stores, destroying actually the products and the displays. And we also told you about Bud Light recently also on the backlash when they put the face of a prominent TikToker trans woman on, they sent her a, a mm -hmm. Bud Light and they, so many people like Kid Rock and others like were destroying all of Bud Light and their, yep. their sales have gone down dramatically. Well, now to piggyback on all of that north face you all know the north face like we're talking about skiing hiking all that the north face stands up to hate over pride gear and they have a drag queen ad they mm -hmm. collaborated with drag queen patagonia i love the name and that's probably why yes. they picked her out they specialize of course in camping hiking outdoor activities and they have a pride participation line the ad for north face summer of pride campaign features patagonia and debuted on instagram this past wednesday um quote i'm a real life homosexual patagonia said the queen says in a video <laughs> i'm here with the north face to help you come out in nature with us they go on to show some of the company's pride collection merch and note that north face will host outdoorsy pride events in atlanta and salt lake city and it looks like other places too when i was looking up there at Ooh. you guys i will post this on tagspodcast.com you gotta watch patagonia do her thing in it it's hilarious i love it mm -hmm. they got of course a lot of backlash from the likes of marjorie taylor green and lower uh lauren bober amongst those who said now it's time to boycott North Face. And North Face didn't back down on this one. Unlike Target and other companies, mm -hmm. they are standing firm. The North Face has always believed the outdoors should be a welcoming, equitable, and safe place for all, a company spokesman said in response to an inquiry from Newsweek. And we are honored and grateful to support partners like Patagonia, who help make this vision a reality. Creating community and belonging to the outdoors is a core part of our values and is needed now more than ever. We stand with those who support our vision for a more inclusive outdoor community. And this, I think, is how you do it. Right? Oh, yeah. Cody? Oh, definitely. You, what were your thoughts when you heard of Patag you know, North Face and Patagonia collaboration? And they're not doing what Target did. Yeah, well, first of all, this commercial is amazing. It's so witty. It's so punny and funny. And the queen is just so likable and cheerful. Honestly, North Face is the type of ally that we deserve in this community. And it makes me want to go buy a North Face right now. I, in these streets, I just need for North Face to have our back like this. I need for all companies to have our back like this. Because at the if when things get hard, we need allies that won't put us to the back of the store or right. the back of the bus. So the, I'm glad for them. Actually, this reminds me of another story that I heard about. Kohl's actually oh. was getting some black backlash because they had a, a family, a pride family on the, one of the onesies. And people were saying it was indoctr indoctrination. These people that were just talking a bunch of nonsense again. And I think they, uh, Coles have has said that they are committed to equality and, 
and uh, affirming LGBTQI people. So uh, I love Kohl's. We need to stand up to to the haters and the bigots out there. So yeah, I love Kohl's too. Yeah, my mom and I love a Kohl's moment. My mom, and I'm about my to see my mom soon, and we'll do a Kohl's moment now that That's you just right. mentioned that. Yeah, um, the age. Jug says, if you have not seen the ad, it is amazing. It really is. I double down on that. Adrian says, I hate to say this, but have you noticed that all the people protesting Pride are non-people of color? Not surprised by that, actually. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> it reminds me of the Chick-fil-A current protest that's out there. Mm. Yeah, and Brandon says, preach, I'm going to get me a little fanny pack. Get okay. it, yes. I mean, there are plenty of people in the uh, people of color community that um, are pro that are not for LGBTQI community, but maybe they're not as vocal about it as. So I do see, I do see that it tends to be a, a lot of the same type of people that are very vocal about not affirming LGBTQI. LGBTQIA plus people. So. Absolutely. Okay. Well, moving on, we've got to talk about The Little Mermaid, which kicked butt at the box office this past weekend. You saw it. Jeremy, our other co host, saw it. Did Ooh, you love it, Cody? I loved it. There's one part that I did not love, but you're about to get to it right now. So, <laughs> okay. Well, so The Little Mermaid. Um, did so well, and that's amazing. And especially since it has a black featured Hallie, what's her name? Hallie Haley Bailey. Yeah, Haley Bailey, who stars in it. And there was some backlash before, and like, why is Little Mermaid black? And it's like, well, she was a cartoon before, so <laughs> she could be whatever she wants. And I just love that it kicked butt at the box office this past yes. weekend. Well, the Little Mermaid makeup designer has had to respond to offensive Ursula criticism. Quote, why can't I do as a good a job as a queer artist? So essentially, just like I just stated, Peter Smith King is the makeup artist who worked on... Uh, Melissa McCarthy's makeup for yes. Ursula, mm -hmm. and he worked closely hand in hand with her for this new live action remake. And a lot of people on social media have come for him, mm -hmm. not him in particular, but the fact that he's not queer, he's straight. And, you know, just to give you a little backstory, Rob Minkoff, the character animator of the original 1989 film, reference the late drag performer divine mm -hmm. if you ever know watch you gotta watch a divine film and it's yes, the perfect john waters time to john waters to watch it during pride month I, oh my there's so many so many that i couldn't think of a better way to celebrate pride but he originally patterned ursula after divine and thought that it would make a great caricature and divine seemed like such a great larger than life character and it just seemed like a funny and quirky idea to take ursula and treat her more like a drag queen so that was the original creator rob minkoff um so cut to today where melissa mccarthy is working with this current makeup artist peter smith king mm -hmm. and they worked hand in hand to create a whole look that they weren't referencing divine but they came up with their own and there's been a little bit of backlash because there's RuPaul's Drag Race season 14 contestant Carrie Colby responded oh, to it. Oh, I love a, her. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're going to like her too much after she responded to a video on Twitter stating that this is absolutely why we should hire up and coming queer artists with a pulse on the present and a vision for the future more often. Responding to the fact that this makeup artist, Peter Smith King, isn't gay, isn't queer, but are we really getting to a point now where we can only have queer makeup artists to do makeup? I think that's ridiculous, and it's uh, it's so disrespectful to this makeup artist who worked hand in hand with Melissa. And mm -hmm. I agree, we want to get we want to give opportunities to people, but. Did they try and go out for the the makeup artist job? I mm -hmm. mean, and it wasn't necessarily, I think they're taking the fact that Divine was the original inspiration for the original film 
who was a drag queen. But that doesn't mean that, you know, now we have to like every person that's doing makeup for a certain artist. I just think it's ridiculous. And it's so disrespectful to this guy Mm -hmm. who did an amazing job. Like I said, worked hand in hand with Melissa. And I think we're taking it too far. What's your thoughts? So I don't I. I have mixed thoughts on this because I don't think that Kerry Kobe was saying that uh, straight people should not have the opportunities. I'm, I thought that she was trying to say that they should give queer artists the same opportunities that they give straight artists. That's That was my take on it personally. I could see how it could be misconstrued. So I feel like she does need to refine her language just a little bit more. I went to the movie and... I honestly did not like the makeup. I thought that the little girl in the mermaid costume, she had bit better makeup. Uh, she was in the theater with me, by the way. She had better makeup on <laughs> than Melissa McCarthy did. The eyebrows were too far apart. One was askew. You have to look at it really closely because it, it for it to be based on Ursula, I think, uh, who is based on um, Divine, I feel like a little bit more homage should have been paid to divine and i feel like somebody that was more familiar with drag makeup could have been hired to make ursula a little bit more draggy because the makeup for me it was not that good so but let me ask you this did you really think that during the movie or are you like reflecting on it now and thinking well now that i think about it yeah i didn't really like that i mean what's your answer to that i think that when i was in the movie i think that if melissa mccarthy had on better makeup it would have enhanced her performance she was great but i feel like the makeup was a little bit distracting i'm telling you the eyebrows were way off and like the the uh eyeshadow was it was just two little big circles right above her eyes take a take another look at it i think that they did a lot in post to kind of mitigate how the makeup was reflecting. But if you look at like at harsher pictures of it, it does not look good at all. Hmm. Interesting. I have not watched the movie, so I can't yeah. weigh in. Of course, people chiming in here. Um, okay, so let me just get these comments here. Can you read some of them? Because I've yeah. got stuck on something. Ursula is divine circa female trouble, says Alan. Brandon says Justin just said a good word oh where is this at oh <laughs> justin said i'm just upset king triton's big chest wasn't exposed in the 2023 <laughs> movie and i hear that because i was looking for that's why i'm probably wearing this tank top today because okay <laughs> i had the titty sound <laughs> uh bryce goes okay people were upset when we are queer and People are upset when people are straight. There is no winning. So I I agree. I think that we need to stop with the the basing it off of anything, really. How Black somebody is, how not Black somebody is, or white or Asian or anything like that, and just look at the work itself. And I don't think that the work was, I think the work was subpar as far as The Little Mermaid, Ursula's face goes, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, and Teddy agrees with you. Yes, he um, does. He saw it on IMAX and he seconds it, Cody Licious. And oh, thank you, you know, I mean, I think it, he, this person could have been an amazing makeup artist. It could have been mm-hmm. a, a queer artist doing the makeup, but cameras and being the way it's shot, maybe you, there is something to what you're saying. And they needed to talk more with the camera people a little bit more. And we all know how that works, that you could do it. If it was a live performance, maybe it was great makeup, but camera is a totally different thing. I don't think it has anything to do with whether they were queer or not. It doesn't. And or how talented he is. He's probably mm, talented at something else. And maybe it was a miscommunication in production. Mm -hmm. from and it could have a queer artist could have did the makeup and could have did it in a certain way and it would have not translated because somehow somebody didn't talk to camera and we're going to be doing these lights it's going to be shot from here 
the makeup that you're doing is not going to translate. We need to rework this. And somebody wasn't on their game in that. And yeah. it could have been a queer artist, a non-queer makeup artist. I just think like really, Carrie, it's like, you know, come on. I like, we can't keep pushing this. Like there are, so old, so no more straight makeup artists yeah. can get jobs anymore now that's that's where we're at right now it's no. like that's ridiculous to me. It were, and i stand it... by that because i just think no it's like did they even try and go for this maybe this is you know i just it's, no if it was reversed everybody would be up in arms so i hear what you're saying and i but i do hear what she is saying in that queer people should probably be more inclined to uh, to be looked at for these jobs to because I can see how there could be um, some type of uh, discrimination that goes on in in jobs of these kinds because it's a big big movie and they sure. the job probably went to somebody that they knew or there's a lot of nepotism that goes on in Hollywood as well yeah we want to know what you think and keep weighing in on that this episode of tags podcast is sponsored by better help. Hey guys, your buddy Stevie here. And as you know, we love giving advice on this show and I think we do a pretty good job of it. But you know, sometimes you need a little bit something deeper. And I'm thinking of a time in my past relationship where I was on a downward spiral. Things weren't working out. I really didn't have anybody to talk to about it. And I was really depressed. I went to couples therapy with my boyfriend at the time, and I can honestly tell you it worked for us. We were having so much difficulty communicating, not seeing eye to eye, and a friend wasn't good enough because I knew they were just going to take my side. Couples counseling and therapy worked for us tremendously because it really got us, most importantly, to hear each other, to communicate to each other, and ultimately to respect each other. You know, we're always growing and evolving in life, and that's probably one of the best things about aging. But it's also important to know when to ask for help, and help can come in so many ways. I've learned so much now that when in need, to simply ask for help. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding, because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Therapy can be so helpful in so many ways. You can find yourself in a deep depression, and a good therapist will give you the right tools, be a great sounding board for you, and really get you back up on your feet. I know it did for me when I was in my relationship and we sought couples therapy. It really just got me out of that deep funk that I was in that I couldn't seem to get out of, certainly not on my own. If you're thinking of therapy, you should really give BetterHelp a try. It's totally online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and totally works with your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a short questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime you want for no additional charge. So discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash tags today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash tags, T-A-G-S. Well, we have to move on and to our next topic. And our next topic comes from, of all places, Home Depot. And oh. you guys, I've been spending a lot of time in Home Depot in Puerto Vallarta because, as you may have heard, I've been helping my sister out with her condo there. And I've spent more time than not in Costco, Home Depot, and Walmart. Well, police are currently searching for a man who took videos of men inside Home Depot bathrooms. This is kind of a crazy one, but we are going to break this down. Let's go. All kidding aside, the thought, um, the, the story essentially was they're looking for this guy. And I forget, did you get the city that it was in, Cody? No, I can look it up right Thank now. You. Um, essentially, the guy has, they've captured him on video in a Home Depot 
going into the bathrooms, hanging out in Home Depot and putting his phone above the stall and filming guys as they're sitting on the toilet. Not my most sexual moment. And by the way, <laughs> who's taking a dump at Home Depot? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went there. It's like somebody it's, is. Somebody is, but not me. But I think beyond not me either. <laughs> so I think what we were talking about in our meeting was by the way, did you find out where it was? It doesn't say okay. where. Okay, no. so I think the whole thing is they're on the lookout. I think it's in Florida once again. I'm just making that up, but <laughs> we could probably <laughs> say that and be safe. <laughs> no, I honestly think no, it is in Florida because I remember listening oh, yeah. to the whole the news story. It's in it's somewhere in Florida, Hollywood, Florida, I believe. I think Hollywood, Florida. I'm making this up again, but it is in Florida. And the whole point is is that I love a good bathroom sex moment. You and I were talking about it in our meeting. And yes. there's a place that we like to go to here in New York City where we live. And it's very sex positive. It's called The Eagle. We talk about it all the time. I have been known to, on an occasion, bring a boy back to a bathroom stall and have fun. Mm, yes. So recently I was in the bathroom stall. We were having our moment, getting it on, having a great time. And all of a sudden, I'm looking up, and the guy is climbing up on the next stall, climbing up on, I don't know what, the toilet, and looking over at us. And, you know, we're in That's a... That's dangerous. It's dangerous <laughs> to begin with. It's like, get out of our space. because what? Because there's so many places in this spot that I'm talking about where you can put on a show if you want to. Yeah. And have your fun when you go into the stall. You you don't want to. You you don't feel like you should be on camera. So even in this particular situation, he wasn't filming us. But I'm trying to have my fun. I don't want a third party. If I wanted to have a third party, I can go to any other 95 spots in this bar and put on a show, which I've done before, and be watched. And I, so, cut to this story. And illegally filming people sitting on a toilet is like, seriously, dude, it's like, go to your nearest Eagle sex positive club. Don't go to Home Depot. <laughs> and by all means, don't put your camera over there. I hope they do catch this guy because that is just pathetic and invasive and get a life. Yes. And yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Doug, Doug says that it was in Jacksonville, Florida. And I think that was okay. the same place. Where that man hung, hung up the sign too, so uh, that's mm. weird dichotomy. Tallahassee was the other spot. Both, oh, it was. You're right. Both Northern Florida, I think. Though I don't know. I don't know Florida's geography anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. I have been peeped in on in the stall before. I guess they thought I was doing something, and I really wasn't doing anything. I was just peeing, and <laughs> all of a sudden, I see this head popping over the stall, and. All I could think of was this is such an invasion of privacy. I don't know what it is about the stall, but it kind of makes you feel like you're in a safe, safe space, basically. <laughs> what, what was that look I like about? To, I like to think of it as a dressing room, my private little Idaho. You, you I know, have a Bradshaw my moment. Mirror? Where's my lights? Do I have a change of outfit in here? Where's my assistant? Yeah, that's how I think of it. Hello, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i don't know maybe it's because there's no you know that there can be no cameras and maybe it's a, a false sense of security because anybody can just come popping over a stall door but i feel very safe in a stall and that person looking over the 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 stall door it just it just took me 100% by surprise and it made me feel very vulnerable in that moment so I yeah I think that this is it's horrible and nobody should ever be doing it but part of me kind of just wants to see the footage as well so I don't know if that makes me a horrible person I think it might but I'm here with it and I'm here to live with myself so yes I mean to your point we all like a good 
moment of capturing people here and there, amateur porn, I think is what you're maybe referencing. I think but so, you, yes. You, but usually to me, and it's all parties are a part of this, are right? Aware, yes. Aware. And that is the best case scenario. Yeah. This guy just coming into a Home Depot looking for the wrong tools when he should be on aisle 14 looking for a hammer <laughs> and some screws. You, and you've been to Home Depot enough. You know all the I aisles. I've been <laughs> to Home Depot. And I'm done with it. I am done. Okay. Well, yeah, we got to move yeah, on yeah. to get... <laughs> To gay dudes with larger packages are revealing the reasons why bigger isn't always better. Work with me on this one. People go to great lengths to for more length, but one Reddit user says that there are big downsides to having big penises. Quote, I see a lot of men express discomfort about their penis size, he writes in a post on the Ask Gay Bros Reddit. Everyone wants a big one until you realize the drawbacks. Some of those drawbacks, this Redditor says, is often felt used on the dating scene, especially because an ex strung him along for six months just for the sex. Then there's the risk of inflicting pain during sex. Mm. The Redditor says he's had bottoms yeah. take five minutes or more just to get ready, and some have told him flat out to stop and the risk of making a mess during sex. The Redditor says being used was the worst part. Thankfully, I found a wonderfully devoted boyfriend who is happy the way I am. What's that song we were just saying? The one that <sighs> Dry Queen sings that I am who I am or whatever. <laughs> you can bet if you are smaller than that man will keep coming back. So, I mean, I don't know that I have a lot of sympathy for guys that are that big. I'm going to say, as I was a versatile man this past weekend, mm -hmm. yes. I'm on the larger size. Oh, really, darling? I mean, <laughs> She's and blessed, honey. <laughs> I'm blessed. And I took my time. The one thing Dr. Goldstein always says is use a lot of lube. And we used mm -hmm. a lot of lube. And I didn't ram it in there. And he was moaning and groaning. and Not groaning, moaning. <laughs> And, and moaning think, and grumbling? What, what would you just say? <laughs> and I think that th there sh really shouldn't be that many downsides to being that big. I think you do need to, if the bottom, if you're that big, it can, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I reposted a recent episode with Dr. Goldstein on episode yes. 469, because he really believes that if you're taking your fiber and you're working with your diet and you're working on gut health, you're, you're going to be fairly clean down there. You're not going to have to yes. do much cleaning, big or small. You're not going to have that many problems. And I really do believe that I'm on a fiber supplement and I'm nine times out of 10, a hundred percent confidently clean. Yeah, Cody, what that. are your thoughts on this? Yeah, as someone who is a part of the second whole gang, me and you and this guy, I guess. <laughs> oh, I didn't we know are... that you were a part of our gang, but if you Oh were... yes, honey, <laughs> come through. <laughs> it's me and you and this man in this story. I don't know his name, but it's okay. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> no, oh, um, yeah, I, I agree. Cody told me on our meeting earlier that, like, oh, you told me about your weekend. I was like, I also had a 10 out of a 10 weekend, too, mister. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh. it's not a competition, but I'm going to oh, let yeah. you know I did have a good time, too. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yes. I, I agree with you. I think that when you are a bit bigger and larger in size, then you have to do a little bit more work as far as making sure that the bottom is not feeling any pain, things of that nature. So I agree with him and you in that there are more things that come along with having a larger penis, but nobody's going to feel sorry for you. If you have a big one, then you need to have pride in having a big one because there are people out there and you just have to search for those people that are going to enjoy your huge monster cock, okay? 
All right, sir. Well stated. And, you know, I have a friend of mine who we talk all the time. He's my neighbor and he's quite large and he's always, it's always plumped up, ready to go. And sometimes he says that, do I know people, who you talk about? I think you do. And oh, he sometimes... Mark, I did not know this about him. Yes. <laughs> and he will sometimes say that, you know, I think they're, they're cock-hungry boys. They're... I'm like, well, you plump it up so much. They're out there. I mean, and I go out with them and I see, I'm like, okay, that thing is like lethal. He plumps it up so much. <laughs> I'm not going to even get into all that. But it's ready to go. And he sometimes thinks there's some boys that are just looking for that. And mm -hmm. it wouldn't even matter what he looked like. Mm -hmm. They are just dick hungry and following him along because they see that and they want a piece of that. And in that certain circumstances, I hear what he's saying. And sometimes yeah. he knows that was just a cock hungry boy and it is what it is. And so, yeah. I mean, but for me to have reversed roles and become totally a top, I messaged the boy the other day, today. Totally and... a top? You're totally a top now. Well, no, so I'm not going. totally a top. <laughs> <laughs> I was a 90% top in this experience. Okay. All right. All right. And Fabulous. You got to get it straight for the listeners. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Justin watching us live says, as a second hole bottom, laughing out loud, I still like being thoroughly cleaned out. I feel more confident rather than worried if it's going to be dirty or messy. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. And, and even with the boy that I was with, not to, again, I'm just going to give TMI it right now. Go for it. He was I'm not, ready. He told me that he wasn't, He's mostly a top and mm -hmm. it's a whole process. There were moments in the many times that we had sex over the course of that night where he wasn't totally clean. Okay. I was fine with it. And yeah, he even laughed. To be. And I, but it wasn't horrible at all. It wasn't like the whole bed wasn't a mess or anything. It was like, I just went to the bathroom every time we did it. And I, 15 towels later that I have to do laundry still on that <laughs> everything is good. I still want yeah. to keep pounding it. And it was kind of like the joke of the night, you know, and it wasn't that oh. bad. It wasn't that bad yeah. because believe me, if it was that bad and we all know what we're talking about, I yeah. probably wouldn't be coming back for more. It was just a little here and there and it was totally worth, you know, Coming back for seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths. Yes, I live. And you have to recognize that you're sticking your dick in an anus at the end of the day. Come on, let's all be realistic here about what's going on. <clears throat> I also I, want to say that yeah. I, I hear what you're saying about our mutual friend that was saying that he only sees uh, he's seen people that are just dick hungry because I, when I was on Grinder and I would send out a dick pic, they would just they it wouldn't even matter what my face looked like. They it would just, just want yeah yes. And so I 100% agree. So this guy does not defeat does not need to feel defeated or bad about his huge size because there are people out there that want him. Right, and want his huge cock. Are there any comments that we dare to read? <laughs> Given the <laughs> icy conversation. Shitty right kitty now? happens, Bryce says. <laughs> and I thought that one was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what else did you read already? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I can't read that one. Okay. Yeah, don't <laughs> slow, read that one. They're, they're applauding you, Steve, number one. Slow, ca slow I mean, claps for Steve because you're, you're amazing. We're proud of you. We're all very proud I, of you. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. That's all. Yeah, I just think we learn about our sexuality over and over again. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Should so. I try bottoming soon? I let's think call you Joe. should. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Absolutely. Okay. He's been asking. So... Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got to get back. To, we got to get into one of our Reddit threads that uh, okay. we only have so much time. Cody, I'm going to. Right? Which one do you want to pick? The first one that we talked about compatibility. Yeah, the first or, one we talked. Okay, about. so yes. there is a recent Reddit thread that asked the question: Do you feel compatibility is enough to maintain a relationship? So let me read a little bit more. 
I was watching a YouTube video and the hosts were talking about how compatibility can be mistaken for love just because two people have many similar interests. They also talked about how even though two people can like the same things, that doesn't mean you were meant to be in a relationship. I mean, that's kind of an open-ended one in many ways mm -hmm. because yeah. you think that this person, Cody, was talking about compatibility sexually or just in general? What, what I do you think thought it was just in general, like having common interests. That's what I thought they, they were referring to. Yeah, so with common, so, okay, so let's just, let's do both sides of this because okay, we get perfect. a whole lot of it. So if it's mm -hmm. compatibility with interests, um, I would say you want some compatibility with a partner. In other words, mm -hmm. if, if, if you like, if, if one person goes to bed super early and the other one's a night owl, if one person is a homebody and the other one likes to be out with people, if one person's an adventurer and the other person's happy to be reading a book, you're probably going to not be the best, you know, compatibility. Now, I will say this here in New York, where we live, you kind of have, you're always around people. And mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, the people that you meet, we're used to being around people and getting out of our small apartments and getting into the world. So, that part of it, I feel like you kind of want to experience life, whether it's a small bar or a, you know, a park moment, you, you know, you want to like experience life and get out of your confines that we all live mm -hmm. in. Um, so I think there should be a little bit of compatibility. Yeah. Because I agree. Yeah. If I want to see Taylor Dane and Kylie Minogue and you want to see a country music artist, I mean, go do that. But if I want to go to <laughs> Cook Shop with one of my favorite restaurants down the street and you want to go to Chick fil A, we're going to have a problem. Yeah. And, there it is. And if you want to go camping and I want to go to. Mykonos we're gonna you know what I'm saying so there should be some like compatibility some, in some yes. stuff but I also but is think that all that you need in a relationship no because as long as there's some stuff that we like I, I like my alone time too and I, I like mm -hmm. my friends so I'm not that picky um but yeah what are your thoughts I feel like as long as you have a a base, a good, nice structure as far as your compatibility is concerned. Like you like a lot of the same things as far as your free time goes, because that is where you where you come home. I think that that is when you will be most successful in a relationship. I feel like a lot of things that you mentioned, like the going to bed early thing and the waking up early and uh, the other partner being a more of a night owl. That's me and Joe personally. And we find ways to work, <laughs> work right. through it and work it out. It still is a bit of a sensitive spot in our relationship, but I feel like we have such a strong base on what we want out of life together and what we want to see out of each other that that is less of a hurdle. So I do think that as long as you have a strong structure and a base in your relationship, then you can work a lot of things out. I agree with you that, 100%. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Well, I, that being said, though, I think that let's go, let's skip to the sexual part now, sexual compatibility. Yeah. I think that that is extremely important <laughs> because I do think that when it comes to sex, you don't necessarily have to have the same type of sex drive, but for gay couples, it's a little bit more tricky because although sexuality is a spectrum, you kind of have to have the same interests or opposite interests, if I think is probably more on the nose, as far as what you like to do in bed, as far as being top versus bottom, 
for your kinks kind of have to be aligned because if that's not the case, then it, it seems like they're going to run into more trouble and you're going to be opening up the relationship more. And that's not a, necessarily a bad thing, but I just think that it's something that needs to be taken into consideration. Nine times out of 10, I would agree 100% with you on the sexuality part. Mm -hmm. I would reference what I was talking about previously on how if anyone's listened to the show, I've always been put, I put myself in the bottom box. Yeah. But this whole experience that I just had with this guy the other day, I was nine times out of the 10 times that we had sex, I was the top and I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. And I want to continue to do that. And he enjoyed it too, even though he's nine times out of 10 a top with the guys that he gets together with. So I think you can learn, like at least where I'm at right now, I can learn to be a lot more, I think with age comes flexibility. Okay. On things like sexuality, at least for me, I'm just speaking for myself and I'm open. I just think with age in a lot of ways, I'm open to a lot of things. I don't need to spend every waking hour with a, a, a future partner of mine. I want to spend quality time, but I also know where I'm at in my life right now. I want to spend time with one of my BFFs, a girlfriend of mine that you, I know you know her and yeah. spend mm -hmm. her and I spend a lot of like waking moments together. And we just have like, I want to know that I can hang out with her and do my thing. Yeah. He can hang out with his friends. And then sometimes I'm going to be a top and then sometimes they're going to be a bottom. I just think with age, I'm learning more about myself and I'm a, a lot more diversified than maybe I was in the past. Yeah. Well, that in and of, in and of itself, I definitely hear you. And I just kind of want to push back just a little bit because I do think that what you're saying is, is true. However, I, I want to pose the question to you. If you met someone that only wanted to bottom, would you be okay with that? That that's one of the instances I feel like a lot of people run into two bottoms or two people that one person is versatile, the other person is the bottom. And a lot of times that leaves one person unsatisfied in the relationship. Yeah, probably not in that situation because that would be a whole um not acknowledging where I'm normally what I normally like. And so I think this worked more naturally in this situation. Yeah but probably not. And that would be more, not a red flag, but just, I would have to tell them like, normally I bought them and this, you know, we would have to talk about that. So yeah, probably not. But okay. I get that out of the way early on. We've got some comments and then we oh, are definitely. at the end of our show here. I know. <laughs> um, what are some of the comments? Oh my goodness. So many. Uh, Adrian says, I like a guy who can have similar interests, but I also like a man who can be an individual. That's basically what we were saying. And if yeah. we don't have the same likes in certain things, that's fine. But if we can find love in the midst of our differences, that is what will draw me in. And that's beautifully stated, oh, Adrian. Wow. I really, really like that. Justin says, relationship needs attraction, connection, commitment, and compatibility. I agree with that as well. Um, Bryce says... Same interest like Home Depot sex. And then he put a little ha ha at the end behind there. Teddy says two bottoms make a top he heard. And I don't know where he heard that, but that is definitely not true. <laughs> and do you want me to read those other ones or no? <laughs> Can you? Oh my God. Everyone's no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for playing along. Yes, this has been so much you. fun. Cody, welcome back. Teddy, thank, you, thank you for filling in last week. Amazing. Take our survey right now yes. that we've got on tagspodcast.com because it will really help us out in many ways. And you can go to tagspodcast.com and you can take it through June 25th. And when you do, you'll be entered into our giveaway our tags promo giveaway sponsored by adamstoybox.com and in the meantime you can also go to adamstoybox.com and get 25 percent off all merch just go to adamstoybox.com and use our promo code tags 25 you can follow cody on instagram at mr maurice 
And of course, he's a life coach at KMG Coaching. Follow me on Instagram. I am underscore Steve V. Or follow the show at Tags Podcast on Twitter. Thanks, guys, everybody. So much fun. Thank you, for everybody. We had so gr- a great time. I know. So fun. And in the meantime, 